Good evening. I'm very appreciate this opportunity to, uh, to uh, speak with you um, about a project we've been working on. So this is what you typically will experience um, when you live and travel in a major city um, in the United States or around the world. And this is also the problem that I've been dealing with uh, in the last 15 years. Um, so, Louis mentioned I'm the faculty here in civil engineering department specializing in transportation engineering. Um, in the 15 years, um, I developed theories, models that actually help the government agency determine the best investment decisions in terms of taking your taxpayer dollars and deciding on what transportation project they are going to fund. Okay. Part of your taxpayer dollars, your gas tax, actually go to a centralized pool of funds that are managed by the government agencies. For many years, uh, particularly starting three years ago, I was called by a federal agency to deal with a particular problems. Um, it's the I-70 corridor, mountain corridor. If you go ski, basically you know that that's the corridor west of Denver. Uh, has the best famous ski resort, Vail, Cup Mountain, Aspen, all in the areas. From every Thanksgiving to March next year, over 15 weekends, uh, people go up, enjoy going up to the ski, enjoy their time Friday and Saturday, and then they decide to come back to Denver Sunday afternoon. Okay, 70,000 cars show up in that period of time Sunday afternoon, and a 40 mile distance actually turns into four to seven hour travel. It has been a nightmare like that in the last 20 years, and it's hard to deal with that situation because it's a mountainous corridor. Mountain on one side, cliff on the other side, the entire I-70 is built on bridges. Uh, so anything you want to do, you talk about hundreds of millions of dollar investment only to deal with 15 weekend problems. Um, so when you play a number, you look at a benefit cost ratio, it doesn't make sense. And, and basically they call us up to help them evaluate a number of scenario. And after that, we just realized that nothing works. Nothing to do with capacity, infrastructure, constructions uh, would justify spending of that money. So we came back and said, it got to be some way to turn this around and rethink how we actually manage the traffic, partic particularly in that situation. The next video I'm going to show you is what kind of inspired me to think about how we can actually manage it differently. But Catherine is going to be the pacer for the cars. She's going to make sure that the cars only come on the highway as fast as we can make sure they flow through. So I'm the old highway, and Catherine is the new hi uh, highway. And amazingly enough, by the time we're all still stuck on the old highway, every, we'll do it again, Catherine, everybody can get, we can put twice as many people home in time. Okay, so what's happening here, right? The funnels are our highway systems. And the right hand side is what's happening nowadays. You pull the rides all together and everybody gets stuck. Now, if you can actually pace the speed at which rice is being poured, you can see that actually we can do much better. Nobody gets stuck. We can all through the same system and you don't need to build more. Now it sounds great. You know, I, I use this video in my classes and I show it to students. Everybody love it. I say, okay, we can understand congestion now. The problem is it's much easier say than done to pace the speed of, of rising poor because it's you and me, we all decide when we want to leave. You know, we get into our car, we, we drive, and then only until when we got into traffic, we realize that it's oh, too late. So, now the concept is really about can we somehow change the way we choose to lead, what time to lead, and which route to take? Actually, in the last 30 years, there's a, a number of different approaches that have be actually been implemented. Now, think about flexible work schedules. Employers, government, in, sometimes encourage that. Couple lanes, that's where the facility dedicated for those who decide to couple. Um, when poor, you know, right share is really an incentive program somehow to help people to decide you know, they can squeeze as many people into the same car as possible. But, but in the last 20 years, we have not been moving the needle fast enough. And that's why we still have congestion problem. Now, fast forward into 2000s, they are considered great ideas in terms of this. And maybe soon you see it in, in your city. It's called electronic road pricing. That's basically charge you a specific fee into a certain area if that, during the congestion period. You actually pay a, a fee to get in. That's called congestion pricing. This is in Singapore. This is in London. You have to pay eight pounds 
during the daytime to get into a specific downtown core. And then this is actually called a congestion price in toll roads. Uh, this is particularly California CA 91 in Los Angeles area. So Toro is getting everywhere. There are many good reasons why we may want to choose to charge the fee for people to use the facility during the rush hour. Basically, the idea is that if you use it, you pay for it, particularly you are the one producing the most externality costs, pollutions, congestions, during that peak time period. But there's a, there's a problem with this, and there's a controversial, ongoing controversy in terms of fairness. Those people may have to pay more, or it could be those who actually have no choices, that probably have to a relative lower income. So there's ongoing discussion about the fairness issue associated with this idea. And we still think about this. We never found a health, we never found the organizational behavior areas. That whenever you actually use stick and carrot at the same time, you actually achieve the best results. So look at the price, it's like a stick, all right? Stick on, you know, you know uh, basically you have to put, pay for using the facility during a rush hour. Now, can we sort of try some sort of carrot concept? And that's where we start to think about, maybe we can add new ideas into this concept and then complement each other. So you think about, hmm, okay, what a carrot means? You start to think about, yeah, hmm, in the real world, this actually happened. When the airline overbooked their flights, what they do? They offer vouchers, okay? Anybody want to get off the plane? And if three of us you know, decide to take the offer, get off the next plane and take the next flight, everybody's happy with all the problem. The cost for airline to pay for the three vouchers is way much lower than holding everybody. And actually, not only penalty, could be a potential penalty from the, the reg regulatory agency, but you just got the 200 very, very agonized, unhappy customers. Then if you go to Disney World, Disneyland, you see this, fast pass. What does that mean? Well, because the condition is so bad in a variety of different rides, so the idea is that you pull a ticket, it tells you that, hey, come back during this time period, the incentive give it to you, so now you can get into a fast pass. But this concept of scheduling here, you have to reserve your spot to get into user facilities. And they use that to actually balance the load of this entire facility. That sounds great. But how can we all link all this together in order to accomplish what we want to do in terms of a care idea? So we started to think about this concept. We first look at data. We take all the data for the entire city. We try to understand which corridor, which freeway started to get congested and from what time to what certain degree of severity. Different facility maybe get congested at different time. And that's what we do as a researcher. We analyze data. Then we develop the app. The app so basically tell the, you know, the user is not putting in his origin destinations, we are able to present the user with this kind of information. If you are leaving at seven, the, the app is telling you that, okay, if you leave now, it takes 20 minutes. If you wait a little bit longer, 12 times it's gonna be really, really bad. But if you are willing to wait even longer, actually you kind of wait out over that peak period. Um, that information is pretty powerful. Users say, hey, now I can make a good decision. I can decide to leave now or I can wait out a little bit longer. Information is, is an incentive for me to make a choice. Second of all, I actually attach some sort of point to a different departure time, which means that if you are willing to leave earlier or a little bit later, I'm willing to give you points to reward you for making a choice. And, and if you leave during the peak rush hour, there's no reward. So this is entirely the incentive driven type of approach. I'm not penalizing you, I'm offering you, try to make a deal with you that if you are willing to give up your seat for the freeways, and let other people who have no choice but have to leave now, actually you will be rewarded for that. And actually, it actually benefit not only you, if today your schedule is flexible, go ahead and do it, you got rewarded for doing that. Those who cannot make that choice will also be benefit from you actually taking yourself out of the rush hour. Everybody wins. Now, of course, you have to do whatever you promise to do. So 10 minutes before your scheduled departure, there'll be a reminder sent to you pop out to your phone, and then you say, okay, John, ready to pack and go, and get into a car, you turn around and say, okay, set and go. Uh, the app turns itself into a navigation app. So it gives you a turn by turn navigation following the rule that you actually promised to take earlier. And somehow there's also, the, the GPS also validate, internally validate that you actually do it. Okay, you actually do it. So that actually, once you reach your destination following the route, the, the point that's been reserved for you will be deposited into your account. So we keep on doing this every day. You know, everybody's happy, but there's a fundamental question. It's, hmm, 
who is going to pay for the points? Or what's, what's the use of my point? Somebody has to pay for that. And that's the biggest economic problems. Who is going to pay for it? The point may have value to it. So that's why in the, in the last few two years, we have been getting, you know, be talking to agencies, cities. Um, they love the ideas. And actually, they say, hmm, um, there are a number of ways we can come up with a point. Uh, I can give out parking vouchers. Uh, we have zoo tickets. I have ball game tickets. Uh, I can call a dealer to donate a car for raffle drawings. And this is a great marketing opportunity for people to participate in this kind of green initiative. Um, there are a number of different ways we can get those incentives at the zero or low cost. Um, there are a lot of people tell us that they really love to donate a point to charities. So we find corporate sponsors to sponsor certain local projects. And if you choose not to use the point for yourself, you donate to a charity, once they reach that, the point to a certain level, the corporate will actually, will actually pay for that project. That's a crowdsourcing way of, of supporting our local school, local projects. So going back to, okay, we've been doing a very extensive study. Going back to the Denver project I showed you earlier. <sighs> there are four scenarios we're looking at at that time. One is to hire a locomotive, a company that actually will actually move the center, center barrier left and right to change the capacity you know, in both directions during the rush hours. Cost you $10 million. $20 million is actually to pay for, to, to thicken your shoulder, so actually during the rush hour, a car can start driving on the shoulder. So it kind of temporarily increases your capacity. $20 million. Then the other idea is actually to blow out the mountain again to make it three lane, increase the capacity. Um, that's, that's really the bottleneck at this point, right? But it costs you $200 million. And that's another, another idea is why don't we just build a train all the way to the mountain? Uh, it costs you $2 billion. Like, keep in mind, we are solving a 15 weekend problem with that $2 billion. So guess what? We actually did a lot of analysis and looked into particularly um, this scenario. And we found, just to give you a sense of, of a return for these our strategies. If I can convince one out of 10 people to take an offer and follow the recommendation we make, the travel time for the entire corridor will actually be less than this. So we are talking about asking the resort, don't kick everybody out during lunch you know, at noon, extend the checkout hours, give a little bit discount for the lift ticket, you know, come back and discount for the hotel, give them the coupon for the restaurants, and so people can hang out with friends, stay a little longer. That's the minimum cost. And by just simply by doing that without any construction, it's actually doing better than spending $20 million. It just kind of give you an idea how effective it could be. And then we convinced the city to work with us. And we have been actually having a, through the city actually, we found several tens of users in the last six months. We've been, they've been actually taking the app and use it day in and day out, uh, give us positive feedback, and help us kind of understand many important things. In real life, does it really work? If you actually take my offer and leave it early or a little later, do you really benefit from it? We have found that actually by doing so, they actually save 20% travel time. We discover a lot of new routes for them and they never used before because they just go with the route they are used to. And we didn't realize that by, by changing the departure time, they actually can benefit quite a bit. So in the end, we, we found out that you know, when we started the project, we didn't know how many people are really willing to change their departure time. We are not quite sure. But from this, from, from this field testing, we found out only less than 40% of, of, of drivers never change departure time. There's a 60% of them are willing to do some sort of adjustment. Now, if you take out another 30% who primarily change 10 to 15 minutes, you still have 30 plus percent of them are willing to change from 15 to all the way to more than an hour. And that's, think about it, you are able to move one third of the driving population, and that's really the missing opportunity we have not tapped into in all our past thinkings. Um, so right now, actually, there are four major cities in the United States who really like the ideas, they who like, want to help us create an ecosystem where the employer, the merchant, the government, and, and the commuter all have that consensus that we can solve the problem all together. We are part of the problem. Next time when you complain, oh yeah, those people, have, you know, I'd run, run late because of them, we are part of the problem. 
because we are one of those cars. But we could also be part of the solutions. So next time, download the app and happily offer our offer. You know by the time you do it, actually you're going to do it something good for yourself and for the rest of the driving population. Thank you.